Hello Info person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a pretty incredible discovery coming from the kingdom of bacteria. The discovery that might completely transform our understanding of how things like oxygen are produced on planets like Earth, but also other planets somewhere out there. And that's because the discovery seems to suggest that there is actually a really interesting ancient bacteria living deep in the oceans that seems to be able to produce oxygen without any photosynthesis, without any light. Using some sort of an unusual chemical reaction that's never been seen before, and the scientists even now are not entirely sure how it does any of this. So let's talk a little bit more about this bacteria and the paper that as always you can find in the description below. But I guess let's start with the obvious, oxygen. We know that oxygen today is absolutely crucial for the survival of various types of life on planet Earth. But we also know that for the most part, oxygen that's used by life is produced through the process of photosynthesis. It requires water, it requires sunlight, but it also requires very specific components such as chlorophyll, usually present in various plants and various algae. But we also obviously know that some bacteria and some other life has actually adopted to not use oxygen, but instead use other elements for the same principle of oxidation. For example, the organisms usually referred to as the chemotrophs can generally use some other chemical reactions and chemical elements in order to employ oxidation and to extract electrons from some other elements. So oxygen is not necessarily needed for all life on the planet. And over the past 3 billion years, a lot of different bacteria adapted to use various chemical reactions to survive in various climates and in various inhospitable environments and have also adapted to use various elements for their survival. Now back in 2005, some of the scientists in Seattle, completely by accident, took a sample from one of the aquariums in Seattle and discovered that, well, there was an unusual bacteria living in some of the samples. Or actually, the bacteria itself was not unusual. It was what's known as the ammonia oxidizing archaea, AOA, a type of uh, ancient bacteria known as archaea that normally lives in the oceans and is usually responsible for the very important nitrogen cycle. It's essentially the bacteria that changes some of the nitrogen that's present in the atmosphere into a lot of other nitrogen that can be then used by life. And by the way, this older video on the channel goes through quite a lot of detail about nitrogen and why it's so important on our planet, but also goes through some other mysteries of why certain planets, or actually most planets, don't seem to have any nitrogen at all. And anyway, so there was this bacteria discovered in the Seattle Aquarium, but it was completely unexpected and nobody actually thought it would even be there. But turns out that this bacterium by itself is extremely common in the oceans. It's known as Nitrosopomilus maritimus. And if you were to capture a cup of water from the oceans, approximately 1 in 5 bacteria in the cup would actually be this type of a bacterium. It wouldn't be specifically this species, but it would be one of these ammonia oxidizing archaea. Although unusually enough, this is one of the smallest living organisms on the planet. It's approximately 0.2 micrometers in diameter, and is basically at the limit of how small living things can get. And although normally you find them completely by themselves, they also tend to form these larger colonies known as aggregates that tend to cooperate and tend to produce things together, helping each other out. More about this a little bit later. More importantly, it was discovered that this bacterium is extremely efficient at oxidizing ammonia, the process that you see right here. And it's actually able to do so even if there's very little ammonia present, in the process producing a lot of elements then required by other life. But obviously, to oxidize ammonia, you need to have oxygen. And what's really interesting is that in the last few years, the scientists realized that for some reason this bacterium doesn't actually care even if the ocean doesn't seem to have a lot of oxygen in it. In other words, even though we expect more of this bacterium to be present where there's obviously a lot more oxygen for all of this oxidizing, if we look at some of the spots in the oceans on the planet where there's clearly a lot less oxygen on average, even in those low oxygen areas, or even oxygen depleted areas, this bacterium seems to thrive as well. And for the longest time it was very unclear to the scientists how exactly this bacterium was able to survive in these low oxygen conditions and to still produce ammonia at pretty much the same levels as it would produce in oxygen-rich environments. Where exactly was all of this oxygen coming from? 
one of the assumptions initially was that, well, maybe these bacteria just kind of survive in those regions without really producing anything. But turns out that this was actually incorrect. The chemical reactions still seem to happen even in oxygen-poor areas. And to test this, the scientists obviously took some of these bacteria and placed them in controlled lab environments. More importantly, they placed them in controlled environments where there was no sunlight and there was practically no other way for anything to produce any oxygen. And well, what the scientists observed really surprised them. First of all, as expected, initial oxygen levels started to deplete quite quickly as all of this bacteria started to essentially oxidize the ammonia in the water. But once the initial oxygen was depleted, what was really surprising is that after that, the oxygen levels started to rise again. As you can see from this graph right here, available in the paper. And so within just a few hours, the oxygen levels started to rise quite dramatically. Which suggested only one thing. They were able to somehow produce their own oxygen, while also then oxidizing all of the ammonia, producing nitrites. With quite a lot of nitrogen gas as a byproduct as well. And because they were able to do so without any light and without any photosynthesis, it makes this bacteria one of the very, very few bacteria we've discovered in the past that are able to produce oxygen in complete darkness. But previous bacteria discovered were only very specialized bacteria living in very, very specific environments. This one lives in most oceans on the planet, if not all oceans on the planet, and is an extremely common bacteria found everywhere. And how it's able to do so at the moment is unknown to us. But what is pretty clear is that the oxygen that is produced by the bacteria is mostly used up by the bacteria itself. Basically, this is kind of like a selfish oxygen production. In other words, the amounts they produce it would not be enough for other living life on the planet. At least that's what the scientists found in the initial investigation. It is quite possible that maybe once in a while these bacteria go through the burst of oxygen production and maybe even produce enough for other life. But in these controlled extreme environments, the ones in the lab, they were only producing enough for themselves. But obviously here, they didn't just produce oxygen, they also produced nitrogen gas as well. And so this bacteria has an extremely interesting way of surviving and is potentially responsible for producing a lot of important gases on the planet. And that's apart from being an extremely important step in the nitrogen cycle in the oceans as well. And since nitrogen represents 78% of the atmosphere on our planet, and also since we're not entirely sure where exactly all of this nitrogen came from, Maybe by taking a slightly closer look at what this bacteria is doing, we might be able to solve some of these mysteries. I mean, I'm not saying that this bacteria made the nitrogen, but I guess you never know. But more importantly, the processes inside this bacteria can definitely teach us a little bit more about how we could maybe chemically produce both nitrogen and oxygen for other needs, but also teach us a little bit more about how to avoid disrupting the natural nitrogen cycle on our planet. At the moment, because of the human activity, specifically because of various types of fertilizers and also various types of emissions from various factories, the cycle itself is slowly being disrupted, changing the overall concentration of nitrogen compounds both in the atmosphere, in the oceans and of course in the soil. And so by studying the chemical reactions inside this archaea, inside this bacterium, there might be a way for us to restore and to balance out the nitrogen cycle. But that's of course not something we can do right now. At the moment, it would be really interesting to understand what exactly happens here and how this bacterium is able to do all of this in complete darkness. Which obviously means that some other bacteria on some other planets could be doing the same. But that's something we'll talk about in some of the future videos. Until then, check out all of the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.